Welcome back to what will be the final mayoral debate of the 2017 race. We have State Auditor Tim Keller and City Councilor Dan Lewis with us this evening. Uh, gentlemen, we're so glad you're here. We've been talking about uh, fighting crime in this city. I know it's, it's one of the most important issues to voters. Uh, I want to talk a little bit. I, I don't think this gets enough attention. The issue of drug addiction. So much of the crime in the city driven by drug addicts who are looking for money to get drugs. Uh, and I want to start with you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, what have you done as a city councilor uh, to, to try to solve that part of the problem? And what would you do as mayor? You know, one of the, uh, one of the issues that I'm very proud of is to be able to, uh, you know, to have an effort to be able to put naloxone into every police car. And it deals with one part of the drug issue. Uh, and that is being able to help people when they're at their biggest time of need, oftentimes when they're at their, uh, at their lowest point, and we have an opportunity to not only save a life, uh, but also to, uh, uh, to help somebody get uh, free of addiction and get on the road uh, to recovery. Uh, so you know, we have about $45 million in the city budget that's related in some way to behavior health, and I want to make sure that those programs, uh, that that money is going to programs that, uh, that produce, produce the greatest results. But you know, what I think about, and I think that what's, what's the difference between Tim and I and what's important for our city is about the $5 million that we get from the federal government in grants to be able to help kids, uh, educate kids about drug abuse, uh, to be able to fight, uh, to fight the trafficking of drugs in the city as well as human trafficking. And that comes from a proper relationship with the federal government. Uh, Tim's policies on Sanctuary City, we will lose that $5 million. And we can't afford a mayor who, uh, who will make this city a sanctuary city. Uh, and uh, you know, a mayor that's for breaking the law just is not somebody that's gonna be able to enforce the law. But this is serious about how we fight crime and how we fight drug addiction and drug trafficking and human trafficking in the city of Albuquerque, having that proper relationship with the federal government. All right, we'll get back to sanctuary city, but I, I do wanna know uh, how you see the drug problem in terms of fueling crime and what you would do about it. Sure. Uh, you know, I think one thing, that the $5 million that you mentioned has nothing to do actually with sanctuary cities, so I'm, I'm sure we'll get to that later, but I think it's important that we, we have some semblance of facts when we're talking about Everything this. To do with it. And here's the reality. You know, we have been doing a lot of good small programs uh, for a long time, and everyone has been doing the best that they can. But the overwhelming addiction crisis facing our city is just bigger than that. And that's why a mayor's actually got to step up. And when we think about it, we are one of the only large cities in America that does not have our own addiction and treatment center. That's the issue. We've got about 12 beds available in one center run by the county. The city has never actually owned responsibility for dealing with this issue, and that's got to change. That's why I believe actually we need to build a addiction and treatment center. And we can also do it by rehabbing buildings like the old Loveless Hospital, and that means money. And I believe in also articulating where we're going to get money for things like that. But really what this is about is priorities. To rehab the Loveless Hospital, to actually treat the things you're talking about, would cost about $20 million. We have that money. But instead of actually prioritizing it to this critical, most important issue, we're using it to build softball fields out on the west side. That is not the priority for our city. As mayor, I'm going to invest in the things that actually we need right now to help our city, like addiction treatment centers. Those are the priorities I'm gonna do differently as mayor. All right, Mr. Keller, that is a provocative notion. Uh, Mr. Lewis, your thoughts about that? You know, we, we're in agreement on this. I mean, when it comes to um, beds that we need to be able to help people, people with drug addiction, I mean, this is something that we need to prioritize as a city. But it needs to be led if by If we were in by agreement, by why didn't industry. you just already do it? Because yeah, that $20 we, million we, dollars was look, for- this is something that has to be led because you also didn't say how we're gonna pay for it. Yeah, I just gave about, you an you know, example Over and over about money. how we're gonna spend more money. Um, but, I mean, your idea of, of, of a behavior health center is to take it away from facilities that help teenagers, that help kids in our city uh, to be able to, to stay active in sports. There's I mean, softball fields. We already the, have Los Altos. We've of, got lots you know, of good fields. One of the reasons, statistically, that shows that kids stay off drugs because of that. So it's just the wrong solution, Tim. And we're not going to be able to pay for it. Certainly, you haven't described how you're going to pay for it. I want the private industry that already is you know, looking at some of the same facilities that you're looking at right now and a partnership where we can come alongside them. But we have incredible faith groups and uh, behavior health groups in this city that are leading the way in this right now. And city government should be a catalyst and a partner in that. You know, not not you know just throwing money at things and saying, hey, we're gonna we're gonna lead the way in that. Look, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Lewis, let me, let me interrupt if I may for a second. I just want to I want to be clear. You say you agree on some level. Are, are you committing? 
to a drug rehab, uh, a large institution that would address this problem in the city? Yeah, let Is me tell you how we're going to pay for it. I okay. mean, Tim said we, we pay for it by taking away softball and baseball fields from teenagers, from youth. Uh, we'll pay for it by a county tax that's already here for behavior health. Ten, fifteen million dollars is generated every year. You know, we could bond against that. That could go directly into a behavior health center. Again, to come alongside private industry uh, to be able to do that. But again, we could talk about these ideas and say we're going to throw money at it and never describe really how we're going to pay for it unless what you're saying, Tim, <laughs> is that we're going to take it away from kids, take it away from youth sports. So uh, Dean, but we have a way to be able to pay look, for it. At the end of the day, uh, the county did that four years ago. So we already could have been doing this. And you are literally saying, you are telling a parent with a child who's addicted, you are telling a criminal who's addicted that, hold on, don't worry about your addiction, we've got softball fields. That's what you're saying. That's wrong. Well, this is also coming from somebody who spent six years in the state senate representing the international district. You changed it from the war zone to the international district, but it's still the most dangerous place in our city. More drug addiction, more places, more people that are living in poverty uh, in that area, Tim. You did nothing for six years. You were in the state <laughs> senate. You, in fact, you voted most of the time with your, with your party, uh, and you're a politician, uh, a corrupt politician uh, that's under you know, ethics charges right now. Um, but you didn't get anything done in the state senate to be able to change that district whatsoever. And after you got through representing that district, you moved away from it. Mr. Keller? So, you know, I, I don't think anyone in Albuquerque wants their neighborhood demeaned or talked down to. I mean, I think, I think that is very disrespectful to the 40,000 people that live in the International District. And I will tell you this, they elected me twice because I represented them and I did a great job. And that is without dispute. Changing that name was the beginning of a transformation in that community. And when I was there, we had the lowest crime rates in over a decade. The question is, what has happened since then? Under your watch as president of city council, crime has gone up because we've destroyed community policing. And because we've used this divisive rhetoric about what neighborhood is important and what neighborhood isn't. That is tearing apart our community. And it's reflected in our police department when we broke up community policing. And that was all while you were city councilor. So I'm happy to run on my Senate record. Folks know that I passed 30 plus bills on reforming the PRC, fixing broken government, tax incentive reform. I literally had the most bipartisan bills passed of any legislature in my tenure. And so i uh, very proud of that record and I learned a lot and it makes me ready to be mayor. All right, let's move on if we may. Well, I mean, I commend you, Tim, for changing the name. I mean, that's great. I mean, I think it's a great name, the International District. But You, know, you didn't, uh, two minutes ago you were making fun of it, No, Dan. you didn't change it, though. You could change the name, that's great, but you didn't change it. I mean, it's still one of the most, you know, crime-ridden areas of our city. We and had the lowest crime it, rates when I was you there. You moved away from it. You moved to the country club. And so you can't say you Dina, represent a city and change it, or an area of town and change it. Look, what we're talking Dina, about is the mayor. I don't think people are here. To, you know, our listeners well, aren't here to talk about like where we live and what our house looks like. What we're talking about is the mayor. Let's what talk we're about talking the about future is, of our is, city. Is being the mayor and leading mm -hmm. in that way. You served in the Senate. I've served on the council. Um, we we both have a record, and we have a record. Mine has got of, a lot to show you know, for what, it. What we've and done and how we're going to lead the city, and that's a big difference. All right, uh, let's move on. As much as I enjoy the fireworks, I would like to talk about DOJ. You. Gentlemen, you both in your crime fighting plans talk about ultimately getting rid of DOJ. You are both aware that right now uh, there is a back and forth between people who say uh, the, the DOJ monitor is biased, uh, APD is being treated unfairly, they're not being acknowledged for some of the, the changes and the progress they've made. Um, where do you stand on this? Because this will affect either of you if you become mayor. Uh, where do you stand? Is DOJ being unfair? Is APD... Uh, not changing quickly enough. Where are we on this? Well, look, uh, the DOJ reforms are costing us $10 million for advisors and legal fees, and those are monies that we should be using to actually hire more officers. Now, the DOJ also was brought here for a reason, because that trust had been eroded in our community and because of the police shootings. And so what a mayor's got to do is actually something that folks in current leadership roles have been avoiding for the last three years, and it's the following. It's all about use of force. And this is why police officers in our city are supporting my campaign. And this is also why civil rights advocates and social justice folks are supporting my campaign. Because leadership means people bringing people together around the tough issues where we have to find agreement to move our city forward. And it's all about use of force. That's why I support ideas like the Seattle model, where we have a progressive structure from one to six, where we have uh, proportional discipline. 
But I know this, I am not going to back away from those tough issues. We are going to fix a uh, police department that is broken. We are going to solve use of force questions, and then we're going to send the DOJ home. And we're going to use that money to actually fund our police department. And that's something we should have done two years ago. Mr. Lewis, your perspective? You know, I mean, the Albuquerque Police Department, this current administration, lost total trust uh, from the people of Albuquerque because of problems within the department. And at the time, there were over $60 million uh, in payouts because of mistakes and problems. Uh, so I was one of the first city councilors to stand up and said, you know, we need to shine a light on this problem, open up the closed doors, shine a light on it, get ahead of it. The reason why the DOJ is here right now is because the current administration stuck their head in the sand, had a bunker mentality, and didn't get ahead of it and lead. And that's what we need right now. We need a leader that's going to get ahead of it without letting the courts and the DOJ drag us along uh, and finish up this four-year agreement that we're almost three years into. We're going to finish it up as quick as possible and send the DOJ uh, packing. Um, but, you know, when Tim talks about um, the, the endorsement of the ACLU, I'm assuming, which what that would be um, as far as civil, some of the civil groups, um, but also the Albuquerque Police Department. I'm proud of the rank-and-file police officers and firefighters in this city who have supported me and are supporting me because they know that I have, I've had their back. They know that they, they're going to get good leadership from someone who is going put, to put officers and law-abiding citizens before criminals in this city. Um, you know, Tim had the endorsement of about five or six uh, union leaders and a backdoor union political leaders. And I, I wonder what kind of commitments you made to him, Tim, or how beholden you are uh, to those few people that are the union bosses. Uh, the fact is, I'm proud of the fact that those rank and file officers support me uh, over and over again. All right, we have to take a break. Uh, Mr. Cutler, I will give you a chance to respond uh, to those charges. Uh, just briefly, APD doing enough to change? Absolutely not. I mean, I've been a big critic okay. of APD right. leadership, and uh, we need a change in leadership, and it starts with the mayor's office. Okay, Mr. Lewis, thank you. We'll be right back <laughs> after this short break.